What's up, folks? It's your girl Lisa with a Z, and I am here tuned in on another Friday, dropping up another episode for you guys. Christmas came early in July this year because we have a special guest. He just fell on the Clash of the Titans card in Orlando. How are you this morning? Good, good. I just finished doing, you know, husband and dad duties, mowing the lawn and stuff like that. And then I looked at the time and said, oh, shit, let me get inside it. Podcast, you know? <laughs> yeah, I got off of work at like 3 a.m. last night. And then by the time I go to sleep, it's like 4 o'clock, 4.30 and then I'm up again at seven o'clock. I don't know. Oh, wow. it's, my body sometimes just won't let me, but I'll take a nap later on. You know, like uh, I'm older now, so I'll take that nap later on. I'll catch up later with the sleep. <laughs> but today is mainly just preparing because tomorrow's XFN. And so I'm going to be out there doing interviews and then. Wait, on a Sunday they have it? They have it on Sundays now. Oh, wow. Um... I don't, yeah, they used to do it on different, I guess it's by the venue too. Yeah, the venue, if it's like whatever the availability of the vendor, if they try to, you know, a Sunday is cheaper, it's a difference of $1,000 on Sunday versus on Saturday, shoot, we'll take Sunday, like, this is yeah. business. so they've been doing it on Sundays lately for XFM. As far as I've seen, it's been on Sundays for the last year. Too. Oh wow! Yeah, back. I remember when I used to fight for that. I feel like an old person. And when I used to fight for that, it was <laughs> on a Saturday. So, like, back in my days. Yeah, exactly. I'm <laughs> old. Like, I'm I'm over thirty now. I'm you know the old guy in the gym. Nah, nah. No, you're the one. Well, you're the one that everybody. Yeah, knows. exactly. I'm the old guy in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys got when you got guys like Camacho and you know jeremy and stuff like that you know in their in their 20s you know in college or just graduated college like but it's it's a good feeling yeah but honestly you guys are a team so it all works out together yeah exactly like it's it's weird it's like you don't realize when that transition click i feel like i blinked my eyes and i was just like you know a freshman playing college football now mm-hmm. you know and then click my eyes and oh shit i graduated then Click my eyes, oh snap, I'm a teacher then. Click my eyes, you know, I want to do MMA. The next thing you know, it's like, you know, you come in as, I remember my first, you know, amateur fight in XFN. And yeah. then now it's like, I blink my eyes and now it's like, I'm helping guys prepare for their first, you know, amateur debut. So it's like, just time flies fast. But now I like it because I'm able to, you know, share my experience with them, upcoming fighters and, you know, help them out and stuff like that. Yeah. And honestly, you're, everybody definitely knows who you are. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you. Uh, our, my first fight that I saw you at, I think you won a belt that night, and it was at XFN. Um, and I was just like, oh my God, like he's amazing. He's like this big MMA yeah. fighter. <laughs> and I didn't, I was very new. I had no idea what I was talking about. I could barely throw a jab, you know, at that time. Yeah. And I was just welcomed into the gym. And, you know, I went to the event to check it out and see if, like, you know, can I, really get into the fighting world mm-hmm. and look at me now you know <laughs> like yeah look at me talking to you now lisa with, a, lisa with a z podcast that's right you know I, I, it's so crazy how mixed martial arts can change your life and mm-hmm. um i wasn't expecting it i really just walked in to try to make a health change for my life and like lose weight and you know just have a healthier mindset and it just grew and grew and grew and I wanted more and it's like I have this hunger for it and I yeah that's the same thing like me yeah I lost weight like when I you know like I mentioned before I played college football and then you know I got injured and stuff like that and then I stopped playing but I was still eating like a college football player so at my highest I was you know 300 pounds so then like just a long journey of just you know just slowly just being active you know at summer job at the YMCA losing weight playing with kids and stuff like that and whatnot and then you know I got into CrossFit for a little bit me and my wife at the time we were just still dating like let's just go work out like she did track I did football um and then slowly I hit a plateau then it was like you know what do I do next and then she was like well you always watch you know UFC on TV and you know you you didn't you like go to state and wrestling so weren't you good wrestler so she was like don't wrestlers do well I was like yeah they do I watched it and then you know I was just let me just go find a gym like and then I started off at ATT Sunrise um under Roger Crawl um and stuff like that and then the rest is just history i just started to keep on losing weight and then my first you know fight was at 205 you know i was like well shoot you know i already lost weight i was walking around you know 245 250 i was like 205 yeah i could you know work up to get to that and then boom 
I lost that. I was like, you know what? Let me go to 185. But like, <laughs> then boom, yeah. I lost that. I lost my first, people know, like I lost my first two amateur fights. And then I went on, you know, a five fight win streak tear, one XFN belt and stuff like that. So especially like when people are like, oh man, I lost this, that third. Losses are going to happen. Like your roller coaster, MMA career is going to be, you know, a roller coaster up and down. It's going to happen. It's just how you come back from that. You know, that's what, you know, sets the fighters apart. Yeah. And so um, I've, I've been watching your journey. I was so nervous to talk to you that day that we were at Guild and we went to that. Um, no, I was like, when can I get on the podcast? I was like, everybody get on podcast. <laughs> when can I get on the podcast? Like I was the main, I was the main event, you know, fight for comment. I, yeah, I lost, but I still was a part of the main event. Can I get on the podcast? Oh like, I was, you know? It's so funny. Cause like you're one of the people, cause as I've, made the show like almost now coming up to a year in October I like was planning out what my topics were what I really wanted to focus on who I wanted on my show and I really didn't think it was going to be more like interviews I was just kind of doing a blog my my big goal was to end up going to all the best schools in state of Florida Mm -hmm. and just go and observe and learn and, and absorb the energy of all the fighters and just be able to become a better martial artist myself and also be able to share the stories along the way of yeah. all the fighters that I've met. But now it turned into more of a really like a podcast interview and now a media personality thing. And I was like, okay, if I ever get Black Santa on here, I'm going to be happy with it. And then, like, you know, some people like it. Some people don't. Some people, um, you know, watch the episodes. Some people don't. Um, But I try to do my best and bring the best out of all the fighters and just share their story. And so when you came up to me... I was like, like, yeah, if you follow, you know, if you follow Florida Mixed Martial Arts, you definitely know about, you know, the um unprofessional breakdown you know about lisa what is he like those are like you know in my opinion as far as like the local regions you know the top two because it's it's not like other podcast shows where you know nothing against other shows and stuff like that but i feel like once certain you know people hit a certain plateau or stuff like that it's just like, oh well that's you know so and so but you the two of you guys are like you know we see you at the fights you're in the crowd with the people it's still like you know a more you know intimate you know experience of feel you know talking to your friend about you know just i mean like oh snap it is it is a show like we are doing you know recording the show but then it's like just talking you know just your friend just hanging out chilling talking mma and stuff like that like and people can you know see you guys in you know in the thick of things when it comes to you know the fight game i love lou lou Lou, and, and he and he just fought too together. and just destroyed like he just destroyed his you know opponent so it's like who would want to you know i got to get on his show next like you yeah, know being yeah. able to talk to a fighter about fighting you know yeah absolutely and he did a, such an amazing job and he's such a great support system to me like he's called manager lou but that's like honestly just a nickname for him mm-hmm. because he's literally been in my corner in my ear just always not letting me give up on this show because I I could tell you that I have had many days where I'm just like I don't want to do this anymore it's just a lot of pressure in this industry especially such a male um dominant industry yeah I'm sure like people like what does a girl know about MMA like you know exactly and I get it all the time oh my god you fight I'm like yeah (laughs) Yeah. I, I get and so, oh, you don't look like a fighter. Like, I don't get what is the de- determination or, like, what is the definition of a fighter? Like, yeah. viewing. Like, what do I have to do or say or wear in order, like, other than fight brands and stuff like that yeah. for people to believe that I'm a fighter? I feel like I'll constantly be battling that subject for a while until, like, you know, people realize, okay, yeah she's a fighter fighter and i'm like okay cool get I'm in there in the, from the combat night cage one time and then people will know like okay yeah she for real. Right. <sighs> that is among the other things on the list but at the same time um i don't think bitch wants to see me fight i don't think <laughs> bitch wants to see me you do know, like a kickbox there's do a kickboxing. possibility do kickbox do kickboxing warm up first do like you know a kickboxing fight maybe do a grappling match and then do mma like those are the those are the steps i took i did like a grappling tournament first 
um did i do no actually i took then i did mma and then i did like a kickboxing fight before my pro debut like to really know just work on my hands because everybody knows me as a grappler but i was like okay before i turn pro let me do at least one kickboxing fight that way i don't have anything to rely on my grappling just punching and kicking punching and kicking like and i got hurt more so in that even i won but i got my knuckles of my feet like everything else okay shit this is what it's like to kick and i had shit pads on like so just preparing, you know, the mental and the physical preparedness for like in mixed martial arts, it's everything. It's right. mixed martial arts. Everything it goes all together, um, which I do. I mean, it's there's been talks about trying to get me in like a kickboxing match because I do need to work a little bit more. I've only been working on my boxing for the last two years. My just straight boxing. I had a boxing coach in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm back here in Broward, you know, I have endless possibilities of training with all different types Yeah, South of Florida is where I say, yeah, that's where I started, yeah. Yeah, so now I'm like, I'm going to work with some of the round five guys. Um, I've been asked to go to Bushido too. You know, they're a great Muay Thai gym. Obviously, John Wayne Martial Arts, my home team. So within the next couple of months, if I put in a lot of work and, you know, just hard work, I'm going to try to see if I take on maybe a little smoker here. Oh, my God. I'm, yeah. It's raining. <laughs> it's raining right now. <laughs> I wanted to do it outside, but then now oh, it's yeah. like you're getting a hurricane. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. We, I think there's a hurricane on the way. Hold on. It's not bad. I can deal with it. <laughs> yeah, if it rains tomorrow, we just cut it, edit it out a lot. You know, yeah, I do. <laughs> Luckily, I edit shit. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the hard this is why I like it. It's organic. I'm real. Like, this is how serious I was about doing this interview. Rain, sleet, or snow for there Santa we go. Claus. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> I make it happen. But yeah, um, so you had an amazing fight at Clash of the Titans, and you won, especially coming off of a loss um, at a different championship title. Tell me what happened after that loss and what pushed you to get back into this fight that just passed um it was just looking back you know obviously after every loss you know you look down you're like you know you're down it's like shit man like you know i lost expect that was back-to-back -back losses like i you know um before that fight you know i fought for ella um lfa you know that's one of the you know pathways into you know ufc belts or stuff like that so when i fought for that i was like damn okay i did this you know x y z wrong okay so now focusing so much on you know doing that wrong i was grappling heavy and then in this you know when i fought against Val for the championship i was more so you know striking heavy like you know just really working on my striking and stuff like that in the first round you know i did good my coach did good you know so everybody's oh man your striking was good you know x y and z people have never seen that you know um before from me i bet you know even val probably was like, oh shit i thought this guy was going to come in and just try to take me down within the first 30 seconds you know mm -hmm. so then in the you know obviously the second round just got caught slipping on my hands low. He's a shorter, stockier guy. Boom. You know, it is what it is. So then afterwards, you know, from a fight, when you got reset and think back, it's like, shit, you know, damn, I did this horrible. I suck, X, Y, and Z, th things like that. But then we just reset, go back, look at the fight, um, and just focus. You know, sometimes people focus on, you know, the best of like, I mess up on this, mess up on that. But, you know, I look back and I focus on the good stuff. And, you know, in, in round one, you know, you know, my striking, you know, he tried to take me down, couldn't take me down you know, X, Y, and Z, this, that, and the third. And then it's like, when you really take a step back, you know, one week, two weeks, as the time goes on, it's like, shit, like, you know, I didn't do as bad as I thought it did. It's just, it's just what makes martial arts at the blink of an eye, just one strike can change the whole thing. And that's, you know, that's what happened. I can't, you know, allow, you know, one second of the, of the fight, you know, dictate my whole, you know, career, dictate the, the way I did throughout the whole, throughout the whole fight. So it's just, you know, obviously, you know, taking time off, and then just getting back in the gym, you don't want, you know, you're only as good as your last performance. And I didn't want that to be, you know, my last performance. I don't want people, you know, to be like, oh, well, you know, Miles, he was, you know, made of it, but he lost. And that's the last that we've ever seen, you right. know, or or heard of him. So it's just going back to the going back to the gym. You don't have to I think sometimes too. some fighters, you know, you know, they throw the baby out with the bathroom. They're like, shoot, you know, I did this. I need to change gyms. I need to do this. And X, Y, yeah. and Z like that. You'll never see me, um, you know change gyms or, or anything like that just because just because I lost like the jungle you know is where I started my um pro career at and you know I've loved it there I've been there for the past you know three four years 
um, going on ever since I moved up here to Orlando with my wife and kids. Um, so I, I love it there. There's no reason for, for me to switch gym just because I lost. And then you see that based on, you know, my last performance at the last combat night, like just going in there and getting back, you know, to my game plan, um, put the pressure on people, take them down, and then, you know, relentlessly nonstop till either the referee pulls me off or the person taps. As it should be. But, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to see you fight again. Um, take some time. Take in those donuts that you like to yeah. eat for sure because I see them on the ground and I'm jealous sometimes. I'm like, damn, that looks good as hell right now. Yeah, donuts are really not that bad. Though. I don't know who gave this notion that donuts are bad for you. If it, if it tastes good, it makes you feel good. If it makes you feel good, then you're able to better perform and do good, you know? I'm going like, to tell my coach that. <laughs> yeah, exactly it tastes good you feel good if you feel good you're gonna do good you're gonna have a better you know a better performance like so i say well, why not like treat yourself you work hard you deserve it right. tell, tell your coach that santa said you can have at least one donut a week at least. and he's always watching <laughs> at least exactly yeah i mean i do try to indulge in my you know favorite thing i'm a chocolate person oh my god i love chocolate um I ha like I try to like stay away from it. It's not gonna happen. I, I I have to incorporate, but then I've also been a little bit smarter about incorporating the chocolate. Like now, maybe I'll put it like cocoa powder in a shake or something, and it depends really on what it is. But I love chocolate, so everybody. No, yeah, I'll just eat chocolate. Best. Just after training, I'll always eat it either right before training or right after training. That way, you know, I burn the calories off. I'll make, you know, after practice, like, you know, let me stop at the, my tank. So let me go stop at the gas station, fill up. And then, hey, let me just grab a, you know, a king size Reese's and just, you know, eat that down real quick before I go home and have dinner. Like, there's no shame in that, especially after, you know, just training hard at, you know, pro class or whatever, hitting the weights like your body. That's the, to me, that's how I justify it. I was like, I'm about to burn the calories off anyway, or I just worked hard. So that's how, I, in my mind, I justify, you know, being able to eat, you know, a king size Reese's bar or something like that but that's my <laughs> go-to yeah Reese's um me I go between uh almond joy and I also like Kit Kats those are my Kit okay yeah Kit Kats yeah Kit Kats are good I mean almond joy that's healthy it got it has nuts in it that's a good source yeah. of protein like so hey I know what? I'm weird I'm not like a snack. well I, I'm allergic to peanuts and cashews those are the only two nuts I'm like allergic to so I can't have the Reese's, the Butterfingers, the Snickers. Oh, man, the um, oh yeah, now that I think, like, all of those are my favorites. Like, the, <laughs> the Snickers and the Reese's, like, I, especially the Reese's with the, the pretzels in it, because it gives you that chocolate and the salt. Like, those are, exactly. like, the big king size. It's, like, a huge Reese's um, peanut butter cup, but with, like, pretzels in it. So when you bite into it, you taste the pretzel, you taste a little bit of the salt, like, sweet, sweet and salty. Like, those are good. That's actually my favorite type of like eating period. I always have something salty, sweet. And that's also my personality, salty, sweet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, Miles, I won't take up any more of your time. Is there anybody that you'd like to thank today for your fight journey along the way? Um, always, you know, the cliche, but my coaches and my and my team just, you know, just moving to up here to Orlando um, and just, you know, being part of the jungle stuff like that ever since, you know, the first day I walked in there, they welcomed me, greeted me. And now it's just like, you know, now I work there, like I'm the, you know, strength and conditioning coach there. So I'm doing jungle fit classes there six days a week, working the desk, you know, at night, you know, helping the young fighters and stuff like that when it comes to their training, helping them prepare for fights. Um, if ever they need me to, to sub in, I'll go between, you know, both of the gyms, the downtown location, the Lake Mary location. Hey, Mosky, go, you know, do jungle for class. Or, hey, Mosky, go teach kickboxing up there, like at Lake Mary tonight. You know, so definitely think of the jungle. And then, of course, you know, my wife will hold me down because anybody, any girlfriend or wife that's with the MMA fighter, they know the challenges with it when it comes to, you know, the, the weight cutting aspect of it, the training in the gym, you know, working at one gym, you know. 6 a.m. I got to go train people, then, you know, come home, eat lunch, then go to my other gym and then, you know, train myself, train more people then getting home 9, 10 o'clock at night. Like, so all, you know, shout out to all the, you know, the wives and the girlfriends and shout out to my wife, especially for, you know, holding it down when I'm, you know, during fight camp. Like, oh, yeah, I made you, you know, salmon and asparagus and put a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then when I do, you know, 
eat a donut. She's like, should you be eating that? <laughs> but, you know, so she definitely, you know, holds me uh, accountable and stuff like that. And thank you for having me, you know, on your show, this, you know, the great platform that you've given to all fighters. Cause you know, maybe people who are, you know, watching your show, they didn't know who Black Santa was. So now they watch it, like, oh, okay. Yeah, I think I've seen them before. So now this just, you know, further gets my name and face out there. Honestly, um, this has been, um, sorry, hold on. Okay, yeah. Um, this has been an honor and uh, a dream come true. I can cross <laughs> this off my list. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know it seems like, you know, very like kiddish or whatever, but um, I do have goals out for this show and mm. I, I know who I want on my show. I know who I want to explore more into and I, I who I want to highlight and you're one of those people because I know yeah. you have a great passion you're a great example in the mixed martial arts community um you have a great personality you're willing to give and receive all the knowledge and so why not why would I not want to put somebody positive um because I'm not about controversy there's so many other shows that are about controversy and the madness yeah, exactly. yeah. And and I'm not, I'm about good vibes and positive and keeping people just up to date with our local fighters because you guys are our local fighters. One day when, I mean, you fight in Titan, you fight in LFA and when we see you on the UFC, I'm like, yeah, I'll come back and interview. yeah, exactly. We'll do another, another show. And this time at the jump, you got to drive up here to Orlando, I come am, to the jump. I'm, I'm planning it. I'm going to plan it. Um, maybe by the end of the year. So, and if you guys maybe take on some fights down here, I'll be more than glad to interview your fighters too. Yeah, um, Combat Night goes back down the side. I remember when, and again, this is showing how old I am. I remember when Combat Night used to be at the Hard Rock. Like, hey, yeah, okay. that was a long, long time ago. Like, <laughs> I did talk to Richard about that. I was like, get us back in the Hard Rock, bro. <laughs> yeah, they totally like revamped. I remember one time I went down there, um, and then like during the construction, they're like totally revamped. So it looks completely different now. Like, it's gorgeous. I've been there now ever since the remodel gorgeous it is mm -hmm. absolutely it's just like you're looking into a whole different dimension and you know it's the hard rock they set a standard yeah. so well, imagine us going to a show over there that would be awesome too for sure yeah well thank you so much miles you're the best i appreciate you always Take I look care. To seeing you again soon and guys check out all his information in the description below follow him and his fight journey Stay tuned for another episode. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. Ho, ho, ho.